Hey everyone, welcome back to another Lightroom editing tutorial. With this video, let's add a little more mood to this landscape panorama. If you want to follow along, you can find the link in the description of the video to download the raw file. And now let's jump into it. So as I just said, this is a panoramic image. If you have downloaded the raw file, you will already have the merged version. I'm not going to merging the panorama in this video because I want to get straight into the cool stuff. And that means I'm going to change the profile first, going from Adobe Color to Adobe Standard, just to flatten this image some more, which in turn means I do have more control over the contrast. The contrast is what makes this raw file a little bit boring. Of course, that's intended, but we still need to change that. So first off, I'm not going to adjust the white balance. This is looking pretty good so far with the colors, but I do want to bring down the exposure, making this whole shot a lot darker. Here I'm paying close attention to the histogram. You can see there's a little bit of underexposure going on right there in those darkest parts. But I don't think that's a big deal. I think we can live with that. Next up, I do want to bring down the highlights since those snowy peaks might be a problem later on. So let's just bring them down a notch. Just like that. So by doing those two adjustments, we made this whole shot a lot darker. Of course, we don't want to lose too much brightness in here. So to counter that, let's simply raise the whites. And you can see by raising the whites, we are not only gaining brightness, but we are also going to add some very nice looking contrast to this shot. Much better. And at this point, I might want to raise the blacks very, very slightly just to bring up the brightness in the darkest areas. I'm still worried about losing a bit too much details in those places, but that's looking good so far. Now at this point, we do also have some overexposure right there on the snowy peaks, just as I said before. Again, this is probably not a big deal, so let's just leave it at that for now. I'm still not 100% happy with the contrast, so I just want to use the overall contrast slider and bring it up a notch just to see what will happen. I think this is looking much better. We could also play around with clarity, which should help a bit. Also, this of course makes the shot look much clearer. For a little more detail, I'm going to bring up the texture just to get some finer sharpening. And this will also really help with those snowflakes you can see in this image, making them just slightly more visible, which I think looks pretty cool. So there's one more thing I do want to do with the basic adjustments and that's raising the vibrance since of course you want to have a colorful image. So that is looking awesome. At this point, let's take a look and compare this image to before. You can see we do have much more contrast and the light situation overall looks so much more interesting. Also, of course, due to the raised vibrance, the colors are looking much, much better as well. So next up, we do want to work on a few things locally and that means we are going to make use of masks. But first, let me check the crop real quick because I have a feeling this image isn't really straight. So I want to change that just like this. All right, that's better. Now again, off to the masking. And I do want to start making this area on the top left side much darker because with those clouds, it would make much more sense that way. For that reason, I'm using a linear gradient. Just try to cover most of the clouds in that corner. All right. And now the problem with this linear gradient is we do have a few areas selected, which I don't want to change. In this case, let's make use of that subtract button and I'm going to choose a luminance range mask. With that new luminance range mask, I'm going to click right there in the mountain because I really don't want to affect this part. You can see now we have nicely targeted the darkest spots right there in the sky. We could maybe further adjust this by bringing down the feathering of the luminance range mask just getting a bit more selected here like this. And now with the mask set up, let's bring down the exposure to make this part darker. And it immediately looks much more dangerous and interesting. Perfect. We could make this 
even more dramatic by bringing up the contrast just like that and for some more details in the clouds i like to bring up the clarity awesome much better i can turn this mask off for a moment so you can see the difference from before to after and we still have a lot of detail in here so that's great next up let's work on the foreground which is kind of dark at the moment so I'm going to use a simple linear gradient and just try to cover most of the foreground like that. And let's see, I do want to bring up the highlights. And I also want to bring up the whites. This should help quite a lot with the brightness. And I do think I also want to add a bit more contrast in here. So that's perfect. Finally, Let's use a radial gradient over the mountain in the center. Here again, I just want to bring up the clarity some more for more detail. And while we're at it, let's add a bit of texture. Just to make the mountain look sharp. Wonderful. And that's the image after the masking adjustments. Again, I can turn them off to see the difference. And you can see it's quite big, especially with the darkened sky in the upper left corner. Wonderful. And at this point, I want to do just a little bit of color grading. So let's head down into the HSL panel. Here I want to work on saturation and luminance. First, let's go into the luminance tab. Why do I want to change the luminance? That's pretty simple. I do want to make those green colors a little brighter and implying there's some more sunlight hitting that mountain. I can do that simply by raising the yellow luminance. And you can see how I can nicely brighten up this spot. There's just a downside to increasing the luminance besides of course having to deal with overexposure sometimes you will also lose saturation. So to counter that let's go into the saturation tab and here I'm bringing up the yellow saturation again. I want the colors to look quite saturated so I think that's a good place right there. And I do think I also want to slightly bring up the blue saturation just like that. Nice. So that's it for the HSL stuff. I'm not going to add any split toning because overall the colors do look pretty good. But I do want to head down into the calibration tab. Here I'm just going to adjust the blue primary hue, bringing it down slightly. And then again just add a bit of saturation. And that's it. Now there's one more thing I want to do in Lightroom, which is the sharpening in the details tab. And as always, we want to bring down the radius, increase the details, add a bit of masking, make sure all those snowflakes are selected like this and then pump up the sharpening. Wonderful. Now there are a few things I want to clean up, especially this gap in the upper left corner and maybe those fishing things in the water. So I'm going to edit this shot in Photoshop. For that, right click the thumbnail, go to edit in and choose Photoshop. Okay, let's start by duplicating this layer in case we mess something up. And then I'm going to use the lesser tool. Then let's zoom in a bit. And I am going all the way to the left side. Make a rough selection here. Hit Shift F5. With content aware selected, hit OK. And it's fixed. I'm not sure how I'm going to fix these things, but I'm going to try the spot healing brush. I'm going to get rid of those yellow dots first. That's quite easy. But let's try removing one of those fishing things. Just painting over it real quick. And that worked quite well. Let's try another one. All right. Looking much better to me this way. So I'm just working my way through this image, removing all those circles in the water. So I'm not sure if I want to keep the boat. I think it's looking quite cool because it shows the scale of this whole landscape. So I think I'm just leaving it in. Let's continue brushing over those circles. It's always the most boring part about the post-processing, cleaning up the images. I do think I want to remove those two boats. They are way more of the center of the image and thus I think it's much better this way. So three more circles to go. Let's do this real quick. All right. Awesome. 
So I guess that is about it for editing this image. I hope this tutorial was helpful and interesting. Of course, as always, if you have any questions left, feel free to ask in the comments. And thank you very much for watching this video.